Hi, welcome to our presentation, Assignment PBLB, Facilitating Rates of Learning with the Use of Technology. Our group is number three, consists of Bernadette Cayugan, Gloria Semikarara, Hilly Post, and Joel Marcella. The problem that our group had derived from video 3.1 based on the context scenarios given in the video clips was how can technology facilitate the different rates of children's learning through K to grade 12? By examining the following factors, types of technology exposed to children, how schools can integrate technology in the classroom, and the roles of key stakeholders that students, parents, and schools play in the use of technology, we will be able to demonstrate how technology can facilitate children's learning at different rates. To understand why these factors are important, we will take a look at the concepts of effective learning and the different types of learning theories. Constructivist theories on learning have been studied and have provided a basis in understanding how learning can be detected. To quote Rochelle P. Holiday and Gordon and Means, 2000, cognitive research has shown that learning is most effective when four fundamental characteristics are present. One, active engagement, participation in groups, frequent interaction and feedback, and four, connection to real world contexts. These characteristics are key to selecting the right technology for facilitating the personalized learning of children. To explore more on the constructs of theory learning, please visit the following website given on the slide. In this slide, I'll describe the four types of learning. Learning in informal settings, learning in terms of operational competencies, learning dispositions, knowledge, and cultural awareness is applicable to all interactions with different types of technologies. The following is a brief description. Informal learning, as Lab 1991 states, learning as an outcome of participation in socially situated practices. Operationally, as quoted by Plowman, McKay, and Stephen C., 2008, children who learn to switch items on and off, rewind fast forward, and navigate websites in terms of extending knowledge of the world. Children are using technology to support and the development of early literacy and numeracy and information gathering. Learning dispositions, as uh, quoted by Plowman L. 2008, dispositions to learn were enhanced through the opportunities for developing independence, sustaining attention, and building confidence gained from accomplishments and learning to follow instructions. And lastly, cultural awareness, again from Plowman 2008. Children's understanding of the roles technology play in family life and in the wider world and their ability to harness the understanding for a range of social and cultural purpose. Children are exposed to technology at an early age. Digital technologies are now part of the norm, where they are used to communicate with friends and relatives by phone, voice texting and picture messaging, by webcam and by email, FaceTime, etc. Most children are growing up with exposure to technologies in the home and not are not necessarily socioeconomic determin or determining factors. They have access to various media devices, phones, mo mobile phones, laptops, DVDs, iPods, iPads, Vtex, PlayStation, Xbox gaming consoles, interactive books, sleep pads, and internet access. Plymouth 2008 claims that parents' involvement and demonstration motivates a child's desire to learn and encourage a child's independent use. Parents provide an example to follow or to imitate. Modeling is central to guiding interaction and entails using technologies in a way that is consistent with real life activities. We will examine the role of parents in the next few slides. An example of preschool learning technology are VTech learning toys such as the InnoTab that mimics a tablet with learn to read programs like basic math and role playing games. Their intended audience is from three to six years old. A popular children's learning technology brand is LeapFrog, such as my talking laptop. This tech toy targets newborns to one years old. It explores shapes, ABCs, colors, counting, opposites, and even peekaboo play. Parents have also introduced children at an early age with iPads and mobile phones. Fluid Messier and Kurokov 2015 noted how children with usually short attention spans persisted for extended periods with the iPad, possibly due to interactive nature of certain apps, which help focus their attention. This is linked to children's motivation and independence. Fluid 2015 commented on how iPads heighten children's concentration levels, describing iPad as a good way of engaging the children in the work you're trying to get them to concentrate on. 
There are multiple roles in the education system, such as student, teachers, and parent, which we'll explore later. Technology affects each one in different and similar ways. As a student, technology is there to provide powerful tools to gather information, consult with other students, communicate with teachers, and allow a way to present their findings. Technology allows for independency and it helps construct the learner's own way of learning and also work at their own pace as a student, as indicated in Southwest Education Development Laboratory, 1999. As a teacher, technology gives them more up-to-date resources, reference material, as well as a way to present information in a way that can engage students. From Whiteside 2011. As a parent, technology such as online classroom, websites, school websites, and email can be beneficial for a parent to keep up with the child's progress. Also Whiteside 2011. Types of technology that can be beneficial to students learning and education are computers for networking, gathering information, presentations, and communication, mobile devices for the same reasons, networking communication when not in school. Other techn new technologies such as whiteboards in the classroom and mobile applications are things you're starting to see more of. Using the characteristics of effective learning presented in the earlier slide, we can relate how technology is used in schools to facilitate learning at different rates. The student's learning environment and how technology tools are utilized is important in helping students new construct new knowledge. In effect, student-centered learning environments emphasize constructing personal meaning by relating how new knowledge to, to existing conceptions and understandings. Technology promotes access to resources and tools that facilitate construction. That's quoted from Lan Hennepin, 1997. Learning through active engagement. In chemistry labs, students use, for example, a software program called Microcomputer Based Laboratory, MBL, where the software can instantaneously plot out experimental results and graphs. Studies have shown an increase in motivation, graphing, and scientific concepts, as cited by Rochelle 2008. iPads and tablet use in schools support this learning engagement. With the incorporation of iPads in the classroom as a tool in elementary schools, knowledgeable children frequently supported their peers during iPad use, and staff commented on the value of iPads in simulating and enhancing language and communication among students in the classroom. This is from Fluid um, 2015. Participation groups. The use of wikis and discussion forum groups are a couple of technological tools that can facilitate this interaction. Rochelle, 2008, indicates that reports from researchers and teachers suggest that students who participate in computer-connected learning networks show increased motivation, a deeper understanding of concepts, and an increased willingness to tackle difficult questions. Collaboration learning represents another virtue of the personalized online world. In addition to one-on-one -on -one learning, technology enables students to collaborate with one another and work with a range of interactive interactional resources. ESC resources can include teachers, parents, peer tutors, volunteers, and other interested individuals. Students become more engaged participants spurred on by regular feedback and challenging assignments. This is from Grant Base D 2014, page four. Twitter has, a, uh, has the potential to increase overall academic and social integration through online learning communities. Uh, from Tinto, 1997. For networking and relationship building, for example, Twitter was used as a tool for extending engagement of large lecture hall classrooms into smaller communities. From El Vesky Muslim, 2011. In this study, participation rates were high, with 80% of the 300 students in their class actively engaged in Twitter, and mostly for class discussions and expanded dialogue. From Cablon, Edmund, and Raylan Junko, page 52. Learning through frequent interaction and feedback. According to Anderson, as cited in Rochelle 2008, instant and frequent feedback relates to a faster rate of learning, which provides students to either correct or apply their ideas quicker. The use of email-based tutoring, computer-based programs such as the MBL described in the previous slide, and online chats are some ways technology can facilitate this. Learning through connections to real-world contexts. Students need to relate to what they have learned in the classroom, to the real-world environment. According to Bransford, Brown, and Cooking, Cited 2008, Rochelle 2008, sorry. Learners must master underlying concepts, not simply memorize facts and solution techniques in simplified or artificial contexts. The Global Learning and Observation to Benefit the Environment program, GLOB, GLOBE, which launched in 1995, is an example of how classroom utilizes this program that can be accessed through a website. 
This initiative uh, links students, teachers, scientists around the world to investigate real-world environmental issues by participating in data collection and scientific in the scientific process. The site fosters collaboration and debate with, with discussion groups, data collection from around the world, and real-time discussion with scientists. Here's a link to the site to explore. One factor in facilitating in the learning rate of children is the use of technology between school and home. As indicated by Grant 2011, page 292, quote, for connections to be made between learning at the home and in school, elements of both need to be drawn together in a space in which both are valued, and that digital technologies can support the creation of such virtual third, world, third spaces. L. Plowman in 2008 claims that exposure to technology in the home plays a key role in children's learning. Guided interaction through parents, grandparents, family members, older siblings, all facilitate learning and incorporating the use of these technologies within the home contribute to the different learning rates of children. Different technologies are exposed to children can affect different learning rates. Parents play a key role in the student's learning achievement. From Grant, 2011, page 293, According to that, Byron 2009 indicated that parents would welcome technology to inform them how their children are progressing and what they are learning, as cited by Grant L. 2011. Using communica communica communication technology can help parents know what their children need to focus on and communicate that, that with their children. An example is the Remind app for parents, where it is used by teachers to communicate to parents. And that's a uh, little uh, diagram there up to your right side of the app that has used currently um, my two kids uh, have uh, teachers that are using this for their classroom which keeps the parents up to date what's going on and reminds them of what uh, to bring the next day or what they're learning the week so uh, that's a pretty useful app in the last five years great strides are being made both from within schools and from national and regional policymakers to encourage the coordinated and systematic use of digital technologies to support parent school engagement in particular, schools around the world are now being encouraged to develop and maintain integrated school-wide learning platforms to enable all members of the school community to access, access learning resources, communicate and collaborate with each other, to monitor, assess, and report on student progress. This is from Sloan Banji Harajitoma Gastra Clark 2011. Learning platforms is now used widely in high schools, offering a shared management information, MIS, virtual learning environment, VLE, and computer-mediated communication environment for teachers, managers, learners, and parents. These systems are also expected to be integrated with the school's use of communication technologies to relay information between school managers, administrators, teachers, students, and families, such as email, mobile phone messaging, online discussion boards, and other forms of internet-based messaging. This is from Sloan, 2011. Also, Sloan from 2011 claims that the concept of schools learning platforms basically relates to the integrated development and use of a number of different digital tools and application. In particular, this involves the integrated use of schools MIS to support the routine recording and sharing of data between school leaders, administrators, teachers, students, and parents. In a study by Grant 2009, where children learning was observed at home and at school, in order to understand the relationship of how, to, how technology can be used to help students mediate the relationship between school and home, Virtual learning environments provided a positive impact on homework as an extension to school. As an example of this is the Launchpad, which is a learning portal that the uh, Ontario's Durham Catholic School Board launched in 2015 this year. This portal allows students to access interactive resources such as homework help for math and language, book flicks, their student e-portfolio, and also allows them to download free Office 365. Strong consensus among practitioners that in order to help students for life in a digital world, schools should make sure they're ready for all other things that are happening so quickly, keeping a balance between learning activities and traditional and new media, and making the most of new technology to enhance teaching. This is from Fluid Messer, Kurokova, 2015. A study from the Imperial College London found that the e-learning was just as more of effective as traditional learning. Research found that students acquired knowledge and skills as well or better using online and offline e-learning as they did through the traditional teaching. This is from Imperial College, London, 2015. E-learning as good as training for health professionals. And it's retrieved by that uh, 
the website, uh, yeah, www.eurecalerta.org. It's given in the notes page of the PowerPoint presentation. Instructors need to prepare for the upcoming changes of the digital age as the future of education is now moving towards integrating technology and offering online blended courses and e-learning technology for professionals. An example is a group member, um, Bernadette's current practice as a teacher, where she's currently reviewing courses that can feasibly start modifying to offer as a blended course within the defined program, which is for the college she teaches uh, is 30% uh, online and 70% in class. This is the uh, blended learning courses that they're trying to integrate in. Using the four characteristics of effective learning and the four types of learning and examining how key stakeholders can help integrate technology at home and in school, we had provided a window of, to how technology can facilitate learning at different rates. Creating the right environment for home learning is essential in facilitating the rate of learning through the use of technology. As quoted by uh, Plowman, Stevenson, McKay, Stephen, Eddy, 2011, page 367, learning at home is grounded in an eco-cultural approach that recognizes that a child's learning cannot be separated from an environment in which it takes place and that these factors interact with people and the technology resources at hand. Imperative that the instructors make the most of technology and incorporate them into their own practice along with traditional methods to enhance learning in the classroom. So thank you for um, listening to the presentation. Uh, the next uh, page would be the uh, summary of the references material that we, uh, that we use to research our material. The following are the references that were used for PLPBLB and for our presentation. 